Um, D'Angelo says, good morning. It's just like saying, I'm sorry about something. You want your spouse to not be angry, but, but there still is a healing process for the offended. And that's exactly what we're talking about. It is a process. It is a journey. And if I'm getting better by day, then, then accept where I'm at and accept that I'm going to be better than where I am today. But it's a journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, and getting back to the endorsement part is that we need to just recognize that it is not justifying the behavior. OK, we talk about this all the time. Forgiveness is exoneration. Forgiveness is giving somebody mm -hmm. a gift that they do not deserve. There's some it's somebody who has been hurt giving a gift to someone who has hurt them that they don't deserve and could never deserve. It's the same thing that Jesus did for us on the cross. If you can put your mindset into that. We did not deserve it. We had fallen short and he put himself in harm's way for us. It's that same thing. So people feel like they, you know, that if I, if I accept this, if I forgive, I'm now endorsing this behavior. Not so, not I so at all. Totally agree with that. Okay. The fourth one, forgiveness does not require reconciliation. Now this is a tricky one because I mean, we're talking, we, we work with couples and we're always trying to bring reconciliation, but we know many cases where there just is no way to bring reconciliation. You think about family members or, you know, a friend and things that happen and they just have moved on and they will not talk to you anymore or someone has died and you cannot reconcile with the person because they're no longer here. It is still on you. The onus is on you to get the forgiveness because forgiveness is for us. It is for us. And so these are the things that you have to be mindful of if you're going to move forward in your relationship. And to your point, uh, reconciliation isn't always synonymous because there are certain people who are no longer in touch with you. Maybe they go back to childhood and you mm -hmm. haven't seen them in 20 years. So how you how you going to reconcile? Right. <laughs> Maybe there's family members of people who have passed there in the grave. There's no way to reconcile. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, the reality is there's some people in your life, some friends who you like, I love you. I forgive you, but that season of our relationship I is over. I don't need you in my in my world. There it is. Certain yes. people are there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. But if you're in, listen, if you've made a decision to stay in your marriage, mm -hmm. you can't stay in your marriage but refuse to reconcile. Right. You know, it's it's you're just making things incredibly worse for mm. everybody. My thing is, don't treat your marriage like a death sentence, like a prison. If you're going to be in there, then do what's necessary to restore the relationship. And that's why we always draw the distinction between your marriage and your relationship. You could stay married, but have no relationship. But if you work on that relationship and you reconcile, then it makes the marriage a lot sweeter. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is, I think that the, the point that I'm wanting to get across with this reconciliation piece is that when we think about the fact that I have to do all these things to actually have forgiven, we put all these rules and there really is no rules to how we're going to feel through the forgiveness process because each person's journey is so significantly different depending on the circumstances of the offense, right? If it's my husband and I'm wanting to stay with him, I have those circumstances. If it's a family member or a friend and they don't want anything to do with me or we're just not in touch, there's mm -hmm. those set of circumstances. But at the end of the day, the reconciliation is so set apart from forgiveness, which is really a heart matter. Like forgiveness is a decision and a long-term one too. It's a commitment. And so it's not based on how I feel today, right? I could be good with Hassani today. We're in a great place. He's hurt me somehow, but I have made the decision to forgive, right? Tomorrow I can be pissed off about something. I'm upset. I'm angry. That has nothing to do with my decision to forgive. Do you see? So we put all these like boundaries around it. Well, I guess I haven't forgive or I can't forgive and forgive because of this. And mm -hmm. really, it's a commitment and a decision and the experience that you have through the journey is very unique, depending on the person. Absolutely. And, and I will say that if you've made a decision to forgive, you're making the decision to continue to forgive. It's a posture. It's a disposition. It's the way that you wake up. Think about it. The Bible says that God gives us new mercies every single day. And that's the same posture or disposition. Because if you say, well, in 1946, when you did such and such, I forgave you. And then, but you're still harboring all of this stuff. You still haven't let that thing go. You're, you're talking up. You're, you're, it's almost like the Al Bundy if anybody remembers, uh, what was the name of that show? Uh, Love and Marriage? No, I forget Love and the Marriage? Name. Whatever that name. Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Name. He would talk about what he did when he was a high school football star and everything was about the past, but he wasn't living out in the present 
this glorious, magnanimous, great life that he had in the past. Yeah. Likewise with forgiveness, it's got to be something that you continue to do because you need it for yourself. As we're talking about, you're healing your part, you're forgiving your partner because it's a part of your healing. Right. And in order for you to stay in a good place, it's something that you have to make a part of your life.